encourage you, mate, to be level with them? Second half. Yeah, um, yeah, to finish almost a, a draw in the second half against the side, and we understand, you know, five five years, I reckon, or six years in Arizona. So, um, been there, done that. So I know how fit they are. Um, so uh, yeah, for the boys to finish off that, that's a, a good sign for us. And to answer that question totally, I mean, we'll, we'll answer that sort of next week, if you know what I mean. It's this is a. Um, a fair result against a side like Collingwood. Um, we've seen what they can do to, to some sides. Um, obviously, to get them travelling and all those sorts of things. A night game, has, haven't played at the ground before, so sort of certainly advantages to, uh, for us. And so, um, you know, for us to back that up and have that same sort of effort for, for St Kilda next week will be the big challenge for us. Well, I think gave you a massive wrap as a footy club just before in terms of where you're heading. Now, just from what you've seen so far this season, from your results tonight. Do you feel more, you know, vindicated than ever that you are on the right path? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I just think individually. I mean, look at the result and, yeah, the second half was good, but, you know, you can also say the second half wasn't that good either. Um, but, yeah, just the individual development of these boys and, and them, you just don't know when it's going to come with young kids about the belief. I mean, we understand Bock and Ablett and Cracker and Harbrow and Brown and, and Fraser and all those. They understand belief because they've, they've had 50, you know, and Crack's 50th game tonight. They've had over 50 games in most cases. And so they understand. They understand they're an AFL footballer. And, you know, but Trent McKenzie and even Josh Toy tonight, Matt Shaw, you know, he still, he still looks like a boy, but he's just starting to play like a man. And I couldn't have said that in the first part of the season. I now can see flickers of efforts and, and marking ability and, and his ability to tackle and drag a, a man down. You can see him starting to do that on a more regular basis. So you see him individually grow. And, and I think then you, you look at the second half then in its isolation and say, well, maybe as a team we're moving forward as well. That's a pleasing thing. Talking also about fitness because Mick was adamant they didn't take the pedal, foot off the pedal. And that was when we thought, you know, it could get ugly and didn't. You know, I think at uh, 18 minutes and 40 into the second quarter, we're 59 points down. And, you know, as I said, so yeah, things were. Um and again, that's probably where the groups move from the first part of the season to the second part of the season. Um, and, um, yeah, and I think a lot of that is the, the boys believing. Um, if the effort's there, the structure's right. Uh, and I'll be honest, I think as a coaching group too, I don't think we've got the structure right for our boys to play the way we expected them to play in the second quarter. So we'll, we'll cop a bit of heat there as far as the coaching and the structure around that. But certainly in the second half, we went back to what we're, we're used to to try and stop stem the flow, of course. And, yeah, to a man, I thought the boys stood up and, and rallied, that's for sure. Has been, and look, I tell you what, not far behind him was Nathan Box's performance. I think, um, I tell you what, to keep Trev Cloak, um, and you know, as I said, he's, if he's not the Darren Jolly didn't play, I suppose, but you know, he's probably then, and, and um, then the next best probably uh, Daisy Thomas was out early, but 77 in, inside 50s um, to keep um, the man Mountain to that. I thought uh, Bocky, you know, I think he's been fantastic. I reckon all year, maybe one or two games, he may have had to lower his colours, but I reckon that would have been very much early in the season when you know, it was coming coming into our um, back 50 like a hot knife through butter. So um, I thought, um, given 77 inside 50s, uh, Bocky's effort was fantastic. And, yeah, the, and the skipper... Um, and if he, if he had a downer last week, you'd probably expect that, given what had happened to his knee and for him to get through that and play and do what he's done again tonight... Um, you know, because obviously it's easy for the Collingwood midfielder to, to pick him off a bit, but um, yeah, he certainly stood up as he has done for most of the season. Guys, Ablett's knee uh, going to be a, a case of managing it through the, through the remainder of the season, or will it be back? Now? Oh, look, I mean, he, he played tonight, and you know, obviously there's no injections or no painkillers or no strapping as you would have seen, and, and similar to last year. But yeah, it's it, it will be a, an issue for him. But look, it's if it was structural, I'd be, I wouldn't be playing him. Um, and look, um, tonight for him to get through the way he did, it's it would improve again. But it's, it's certainly not 100. percent But uh, that doesn't phase phase Gaz. And um, you know, as I said, uh, he's better for the run. You ask a lot of uh, Bocky, don't you? Also, believe every week, you know, he's gonna he's done. Opposition's best for every single game, pretty much. Yeah, he is, and, and because he's playing that way, I mean, it's a very easy. I think Dean Solomon sleeps very easy at night, knowing that, um, you know, uh, and look, he's played on Buddy Franklin, had to come off uh, for um, 
for other reasons. I had to go visit the toilet and all that sort of stuff. He jumps up and kicks three goals, I reckon, on Hutchins and um, I forget who, or it might have been just Jack Hutchins on that occasion. Um, doing a great job on Matthew Pavlich forward against Fremantle and it comes off again through um, nature calling and, you know, um, three goals later, two on Brennan and one on Hutchins again. Um, he goes on and almost stops him again. So uh, he's... He's, um, I remember seeing him in 2006 when he's in all Australian form, and um, yeah, he's, he's not far off. But given the side he's in, you know, it's even a better result, I think. Is, is he a more complete footballer? Because I think in 2006 he was a loose man. Like he, was, he plays one on one against big forwards now. Yeah, you're probably right there, Hamo. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just remember him playing some good footy, but you're probably right. I mean, Adelaide system, they, they don't mind a, a loose man back. and. and but in our case, we can't afford that. Uh, and as you say, he's played on some big brutes and uh, played some very, well, obviously the best forward from the opposition. And uh, he's done a fantastic job. He has, has done all year. And, and under Duresh too, it's not as invariably in first part of the season, it's been coming on the forwards terms, not his terms. So um, yeah, he's done a fantastic effort. And it's probably one of the things we've learnt and what we've taken for granted, but a lot of these boys, Bocky's a bit, he's an old, um, older, but even Gary, he, growing into those leadership roles. Brownie's another one. I mean, he's old, 28, but as far as leadership goes, and we've seen it in Harbrow and Cracker as well, as silly as that sounds, well, they're probably sitting at their other clubs sort of in the second tier of leadership. You know, they don't have to get up and speak. And even Gaz, I mean, he just let the Geelong senior players take it. He was part of the leadership group, but really didn't have to say a great deal because th they'd say it, Matty Scarlett would say it and all that sort of stuff. Here, you know, Bock and Brown and these boys, they look around and say, well, we have to say something. We actually have to grow up. And I think um, their off-field work and their, their leadership around the group has been fantastic. And that's a lot of where we've moved so quickly. Um, it's certainly largely to do with those and then the young kids joining in and actually having the effort and the belief in their own abilities. Um, Harley Bunnells, he turned a few corners tonight. I mean, is he showing signs of enjoying his footy again? Oh, look, yeah, I think he's always enjoyed it. Um, but he might just want to have enjoyed it back at home, that's all. Um, but yeah, I mean, th that's a constant challenge with Harley. But yeah, he's, he's knuckled in and I think he's earning back the, the players' respect. I think there's some blocks last week, there's some rundown tackles last week. And as we spoke to him after the game, that's how he's going to win back the players' um, respect. That's how you do it. We know the, the marks, we know the kicks around the corner, we know the shots on goals and the, the freaky skills he's got. But um, the defensive work rate since he's come back, is that's the thing that's pleasing and winning back the respect of his teammates. How uh, influential, I know, over your life, Mick's been huge, but just this year you revealed that you still speak fr pretty frequently and... Yeah, oh, yeah, we do. Yeah, we we do, and um, as I said, to play for him. People scratched my uh, scratched their head when I went out and, and actually worked for him for five years. But as I said, when I played for him, all I got was the cake, and generally it was fairly salty and nasty. Um, and then to go and work with him, it was all about how how that cake's made. And you know, different types of players, different positionings, all those sorts of things. So that was the most, in, probably the. I enjoyed obviously playing for him. Uh, he poked me a fair bit uh, to get the best out of me, and I understood that. Probably, I probably un understood that too late in my career. Um, and then to go and work for him to see how he does what he does, that was, you know, the five years were probably easily equate for the ten years I played for him. So that was fairly enlightening. So um, yeah, he's been, you know, 15 years of uh, of my life. Um, spent with Mick, uh, I'm 40, so it's almost, um, it's almost 50% of my life. I spent a lot of time around him. So, um, Are you morphing into him a little bit? Uh, well, you, you reckon you caught one for me, so uh, you can answer that question, can't you, Hamo? But, <laughs> uh, look, look, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I'm not going to be able to answer that
arm wrestle early, but certainly that second quarter and late in the first quarter, we, we let them in and I reckon that's what the boys will take away from it. You know, just that mental challenge to make sure we just keep crossing our T's and dotting our I's. Thank you.